Just driving around normal day, um, and somebody was just falling really closely, and, and the windows were tinted, so I couldn't see anything about the person at all. And I slowed down, maybe tapped my brakes a little bit, just to let him know this is kind of dangerous. He called me the N-word. He let me know that I didn't belong in the community. So I wrote the blog and uh, put it on Facebook and it got shared to next door and more and more people started reading it. When somebody hurt me, they felt hurt. It started with um, reading a blog, a post on next door. And the blog was from an African American man um, talking about an experience that he had in town. And so I have been on there, I have to admit, I got a couple of posts in there <laughs> to let them know that I was African-American woman and I was an old lady and that I could, you know, and my son had experiences. Looking at it and being a trainer and facilitator, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Building the seats. Boy, you can tell we're at a church. I can see you being a very effective principal. I feel I like you know how to keep kids in line. I did, but I also loved them, but I kept them in line. You were there as well for the Civil Rights Movement. I was out there marching, 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 and I'm glad I'm, I never stopped. It was like exciting to see Martin Luther King in person. And guess what? I'm here still working, trying to interrupt racism, trying to make our town a better place. Fast forward to Oregon today. I think if you're a white person, this is a great place. You know, you have the mountains, you have the desert, you have, you know, all kinds of places you can go. There are lots of progressive um, shops and restaurants and what have you. Willie and her friend Liberty created an organization called Respond to Racism to directly address the racism they saw in their community. In our first meeting, 66 people showed up. And we tried to end the meeting, and they wanted to have another meeting. Every month, this community growing. Grows, growing. We've had as many as 200 people packed in that room. This group and people of all ages are coming ages. together and connecting. Every month. In person. Yes. To overcome yes. some of these differences. Yes. <laughs> I think that conversation really allows for people to empathize and to connect with other people. So I think in like with each person that shows up, I think that they leave as a better person. To go to Respond to Racism and meet Willie and to meet all these other people who are, who are having really similar experiences that I'm having, it just felt like I had a community and that really meant a lot. I, I really do believe that um, the conversation about racism is important. Um, we need to have it, we need to continue to have it. Our show is called More in Common. In what way do you think these meetings, month after month, help people to recognize that they maybe have more in common than they thought? I think people don't talk to each other. And we sometimes get stuck on social media because you can hide behind typing those words in. But in, when you talk person to person and you look at someone in the face and you can feel their hearts or their anger or whatever might be coming out there of emotions, things happen. Willie, when we last talked just a few months ago, you know, we heard your life story and how you marched and marched for the civil rights movement. And now Portland, Oregon has seen so much uh, of the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests there playing out. And just wanted to get your thoughts on what's going on there in your home state. I'm excited about the good protests. I like the fact that people are marching and they think Black Lives Matter. I love seeing the moms, I love seeing the dads, I love seeing all of our uh, Black organizations out there protesting with the same message. And I'm seeing that ripple across the nation. So you ask me how I feel, I am happy. And as John Lewis would say, it's good trouble. How has responding to racism kind of uh, faced these new challenges? We're still out there. So we're protesting in Lake Oswego. We celebrated Juneteenth for the first time ever in the city of Lake Oswego. 
and we had probably 300, 400 people there celebrating and marching. We've had a car rally with, oh, 120 plus cars in it. And I see um, an energy that's not going away. This is something that's different. I was like, Martin Luther King died. We didn't do this, not to this extent. People in the nation, this nation, have finally woken up and realized what we've been saying for years, that black lives matter. And people say, well, all lives matter. I said, well, no, all lives won't matter until black lives matter. Most powerful words and, and appreciate your lifelong commitment uh, to this cause and uh, all that responding to racism has done.